Hi and welcome to Violet Connie Art. Today I am going to show you my handmade watercolours. Um, I'm just going to show you the different palettes and do a little bit of swatching um, to show you what I've done. Um, so that anyone that would like to purchase them can see this video before they purchase um, to make sure it's what they want. So I made uh, this palette with six colours and it's the Aussie Nature palette. And I've realised after I've printed all of my labels and everything that I've actually spelt palette wrong. It should be P-A-L-E-T-T-E. And that will be changing on my next pack packaging. But for now, um, because it's across everything I've done, it's a little bit hard to change and it was also printed on my dot cards which I can't change so um, that would waste all of the paint so these are my dot cards with the pigment inf in information on the back and they are also available on my Etsy shop as well um, sorry about my fridge it's making some awful noise at the moment I think it's dying but um, yeah anyway that aside this is my handmade watercolor palette um, so it's the Aussie nature palette I came up with the ideas for the names myself as they do most people who make their own handmade watercolors made these stickers to go on the top and also on the bottom but that has information on there for people that want to use them now um, inside you, you'll find a swatch card and this is actually Fabriani Fabriano 25% cotton watercolor paper and it's cold pressed and on the back of each it has the pigment information as well as the ingredients inside of each paint i um, will make a paint making video at some stage but um, um that will happen when i do my next lot of batches because this one took me a really long time to put together there was a lot of experimenting so inside of each there is a uh, little packaged individual package with foil and it has the pigment information on the side and also the ingredients and so these are inside and on the bottom of each of these pans there's actually a double sided sticky dot so that you can adhere them to the bottom of the pan. I actually did buy magnets but these tins do not are not magnetic so I can't stick anything with the mag magnets to the bottom of these tins. So sticky dots will have to do. The next lot of tins I order I'm pretty sure um, I'll be able to use my magnets. But this is what they look like. And that's my printer making noise. I think it's shutting down. So this is um, pre before they are actually um, wrapped. And I wanted to show this because um, I wanted to show that some of them are actually really, even though it looks cracked, this one is really quite sticky. So the yellow can be really sticky. And you can see the sticky dot that I've got on the bottom there. And so is the red. But then the uh, brown, so my making mud pies, um, I'll try and get it on the video, is actually really quite cracked. And this is to do with the different um, properties of each of the pigments that are used. Each of them re reactivate in a different way from each other. And so, um, yeah, it just depends on um, the actual pigment powder, which the, even when I open up the jars to make the paints, you can see that the pigment powders vary quite differently, um, quite a lot from each other. So I was actually going to show a few of these. I think this is another one where it, the palette is has some cracked pieces and some not, um, but it all paints exactly the same. So I was going to show how to how I wrap one of my paints. So I will get out an emu, emu bush violet here, and I have pre-cut some foil, and I put it upside down, and there's the sticky dot on the back to adhere it to the tin. I wrap them each individually which is really tight, quite time consuming but I just do it on the couch in the evening where I have been while I watch some movies and then I fold it just like a little present really and squish that one up there and do the same for the other side and this is how each one of these is lovingly packaged so <laughs> very time consuming but I've actually enjoyed it this has been really therapeutic to do and um, yeah I've really I really enjoy the process of paint making it's something that's really uh, hard to describe but it's very soothing and relaxing so then I use a bit of double-sided tape on the back of the bottom of my label which I made these up on my printer just using word and I stick each one of these um, 
into my little pan just like this and that's how I wrap each of my individual colors now let's get on to some swatching so as you can see here I have my own little palette this pink tin that came was actually a bit defective it had some dints in the lid and it was also not rolled at the top so this is actually quite sharp so I thought I'll keep this to myself whereas the tins that I am selling are actually rolled at the top so I'm not sure what happened in production of this one but um, yeah I get to keep it for myself so that's okay in my last video on my fairy garden painting video I actually used the paints in here which I originally made to test out the colors um, but it's also nice to have it in a little tin um, like the ones that I'm selling if you go and check out that video I'm actually doing a giveaway until the 8th of November uh, this year so uh, 2018 um, for a free dot card um, and you just have to make sure that you answer the question in the video um, in the comments um, to go into the draw to win so that video will be up until the end of this week if you want to go and check it out so let's get swatching out these colors and we're going to start with the uh, bottle yellow so first of all I'm just going to go through and just put a glob of water on each of these. Some of these reactivate really well but some don't and the main culprit for not reactivating very well out of these paints is actually the Spinifex Green. It has a very unusual texture but the colour is really quite beautiful and so um, even though it takes a while to reactivate I really do enjoy painting with that colour. So first of all, we have the Waddle Yellow. This one reactivates beautifully. It's very creamy, um, as you can see up here. Um, and it doesn't take much at all. And the vibrancy of this color is just amazing, as you can see here. Let's add some more water to see how that goes. So to lighten it up along the way, there's a mark on the paper there. And we're gonna add a little bit more water. And can see that it has a nice range of color so I really really like that color and as I said the pigment information of all these is on the back of the cards um, let's put one just up here so you can see that okay so next up we have the sunburn earth this is another color that beautifully reactivates so it um, doesn't take much at all and it is a really lovely earthy red and it has lovely speckles and such a beautiful texture to it um, the texture is uh, of these colors particularly the red the brown and the blue is something that I've really enjoyed painting with and um, and liked seeing the outcome um, of them so here you can see and this swatch card that I'm swatching on is exactly the same paper that I put the swatch cards in each of these kits so you can see how these papers this paper reacts with these particular paints so next up we have making mud pies now i named making mud pies because when i was a kid as an aussie kid i loved to make uh, mud pies outside playing in the dirt and i'm sure probably a lot of people love to make mud pies but it's just something that reminds me of being outside in the great outdoors outdoors in Australia so that's why I included this name plus it's kind of cute just the, the granulation I'm not sure if you can see that in this but the texture it, that comes out of uh, the red and the brown uh, is just gorgeous okay next up we have the emu bush violet and the emu bush violet sorry and this was actually the first color I purchased and played with of course because my favorite color is purple and again like the brown you can see that it has a really beautiful kind of texture to it nearly a granulation look and it's absolutely gorgeous it's one of my favorite purples I haven't got any other purple like this in any of my professional watercolors and I just really have enjoyed playing around with this particular paint let's move this stuff up okay so next up we have uh, the kookaburra blue which also reactivates really lovely and it's a really strong color so you don't need much of it and it is just gorgeous so i'm not sure if you can see how this is coming out on the paper but it is really quite pretty
Next up and last is all now this Spinifex Green. Now this is the one that I've had a little bit of trouble reactivating. So let's see how we go with it now that I've left the water on there for a while. Oops, things are clinking around. Let's get a bit of this on here. And it's beautifully, it's reactivated beautifully. It's actually a lot lighter than a, a lot of the colours in here. And I think it actually goes well because when you mix the blue, the kookaburra blue and the wattle yellow, you actually come up with a much more dark and vibrant green. And this one's just light and flowy. And I think it just, it's really lovely. The texture is a lot different. If you can see here, it's just um, much more creamy feeling and less granulating feeling. So I wanted to do a quick color, a couple of um, color mixings. So I'm gonna color mix the yellow with the the blue and show you the nice green that you can get from that so this is the wattle yellow and the kookaburra blue together and they are it's just gorgeous color it's beautiful it's nearly like a really dark teal kind of color and then another mix i wanted to show you was also the newbie bush violet again with this blue because it's just gorgeous and it comes up with this even another really gorgeous looking purple. Look at that. It's really lovely. And I can even add some more of the purple into that. And it just mixes really beautifully. I want to show you the wet on wet technique that you can do just really quickly. So I'll do a little bit of wet. And we'll just go with the Uni Bush Violet because I've got a bit of that in there already. And see how it mixes. So it does travel. Sometimes um, Hemme Boy colours don't travel through your water very well. But I find that these ones have, are really quite good at dispersing. They're not overly dispersing, but they do disperse a little. And how about we do one more mixture? I really love how the um, red and the brown go together. So we'll do sunburnt earth. And let's mix them on the page. Sunburnt Earth with the Making Mud Pies. Comes up with this um, beautiful ornamental brown. Let's get some more wet on there. And a little bit more of this Making Mud Pies. I don't know why when I'm painting I always want to talk quietly. Um, but yeah, you can get quite a variation in colours, and this is just some of the examples. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and um, please feel free to go and check out my Etsy shop. Um, these palettes will be available. There is actually only seven of them available at this stage. I will be making more, but at this time there's seven of these, and there will be uh, eight of these dot cards as also available in my Etsy shop and the link is below. Thank you so very much for watching um, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.